Good to know you're still with us. Traders, Okada riders, taxi drivers, and more in communities in Lagos, Ogun, and Abuja flouted the lockdown order over the weekend. Some of them named hunger as the cause for their non-compliance. Also in Akwa Ibom State, church services were held in several churches uh, on Sunday in defiance of the state government's order prohibiting public gathering. Is it that people are yet to grasp the urgency after lockdown? I still have in the studio legal practitioner Fidel Albert. Thank you very much for Thanks staying with us. Thank you. Uh, we'll start this conversation though with an update from our correspondent in Lagos, Amadine Uyi. Amadine, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Felicity. Okay. Abuja is fine. Abuja actually he is in Abuja. All right, um, let's start by getting an idea on the level of compliance um, to the lockdown order in Abuja. We know that the um, city centre, uh, there is large compliance, but in the suburbs, uh, we hear that Okada riders uh, in Kubwa, traders in Kujé, uh, Buari, taxi drivers in Zuba area. Hello? Um, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. So what are residents saying is their reason for disobeying the lockdown order? Now, I think the first two days, uh, two to three days, the lockdown was a bit serious. We reported that uh, the satellite communities, uh, that uh, a, a lot of residents in the communities were, uh, there was a level of compliance, do not absolute compliance. Uh, there was absolute compliance uh, within the city center. But as of today, when uh, we went out, it was business as usual. Uh, most of the shops that had closed down the first two, three days, we observed that many of them were open. Though we can't say, for, say uh, that eight out of ten shops that were closed were now open. And you would see that uh, transporters or cada riders, uh, tricycle operators, they were going, it was business as usual. So what are they saying so, is their uh, reason? What are they saying is their reason for uh, flouting the order? Some we spoke to said that uh, they earn uh, money for their daily bread on a daily basis, and they cannot continue to stay indoors because government has not provided any form of palliatives. Remember that a few days ago, the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs was uh, doling out 20,000, 20,000 to uh, the group they call the poorest of the poor. But information we got was that uh, that list, though the beneficiaries were people that had been called from uh, way back 2016. So, as of today, uh, no, uh, no new poorest of the poor are in that list. And many who reside in the satellite communities, uh, Okada riders, uh, those that roast yam, uh, sell food stuff on the road, they, they are not on a month monthly salary or monthly stipend from government. Do you see they this get getting, their money do you, daily. Do you, do you see this getting worse? Yes, it will get worse. Uh, because th from what we saw today, people are throwing all caution to the wind. To try. Remember I said earlier on, a few days ago, that most of the residents are faced with two devils. The devil uh, of the coronavirus pandemic and the devil of hunger. And many of them are choosing to face the devil of hunger because uh, for them, coronavirus is something that they still see uh, a lot of them see it as an elite, elite problem that it has not come down to the grassroots. All right, and Amadine. we pray it doesn't come down to the grassroots because there's no reason. observing of any form of social distancing. I'm afraid that's uh, the much we can take. Thank you very much for that update, Amadine. Thank you, Felicity. Stay safe. All right, we'll try and connect with a public affairs analyst in Ogun State. As soon as uh, that contact is established, uh, we'll get on to him. But let's take a reaction from um, Fidel. Your thoughts, the lack of compliance. Um, let me take um, an example of um, a Kwaibom that you mentioned. Um, because I'm from there, 
and I, I am able to monitor what is going on there. Um, what happened in Akwaibom was very, very, um, I don't know how to put it, quite unfortunate because um, they were alert that were given to the governor uh, uh, that, that there were, they were, they were potential um, cases. cases in the state. He ordered a lockdown. N no, before he ordered that lockdown, he had said to the people, um, Akwaibom State is safe. Uh, of course, the usual mantra, we are God's state. Uh, Akwaibom State is safe. There is no case. Go about your normal business. Everybody went about their normal business. But he did come back. Let's Until get better the, late hang than on, not. Hang on. Yes. Until the five cases came up. Mm. You know, that is when social media now blew up. You know, why are you not taking precaution? And so 8 p.m. of that evening, he ordered a lockdown without forewarning. And I'm talking about a state that is a civil service state. Nobody, in fact, only it's a, a few people who could make money out of normal civil service and they're, they're the politicians. These are, these are very, very poor people. They, are, they, are subsist they, 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 they rely on subsistence living. And so if you lock me up in my house by eight, I have not even had the opportunity to go and stock up. You're closing, the, like today, there's a town, a small town where I am from, called Abak. You know, people had to- Abak get, is not that small, well, I've been there. Yeah, yeah but, <laughs> but, but you know, they had to go into the market to go and drive people away. And these are people who are horridly trying to sneak to stock up. Then you go disrupt the market. Now, even in the regulation that the president um, um, released for Lagos and Ogun State and Abuja, you know, selling of um, uh, food, items. food items were exempted, right? But in that state, you can't even get the food items to buy because the markets are disrupted. No, you, you must, in fact, it's enforced with an iron. So, okay, are you, are you justifying the fact that people are willfully ignoring a directive. If you're talking about food stuff, one would understand. Yes. But when you now look at the churches, I mean, they are not um, insulated from what is happening in other parts of the country. Yes. They know for a fact that FCT, Abuja, I mean, uh, uh, Lagos and Ogun all have been uh, locked down. And there are words everywhere. Wouldn't they, it be commonsensical they, they for them to the at least abstain? The, the lockdown... Um, you know, I mentioned something earlier when, when we spoke. Um, the lockdown in Lagos and Ogun State and Abuja has been by law. There is no such law. No, I, I think he, he made um, a, a law that, that, that justified is, that his is, action. That, that is the problem. Under Section 305 of okay. the Constitution, it is only the president that can make those sort of emergency laws. Only the president. Okay. That is the problem. So what options? We have a situation in our hands the now. The option is for the governor, section 305, I think is subsection 4, uh, or 3 actually, um, empowers the governor to contact the president to direct for the making, if he feels that his territory is affected, to, to direct the making of that, that, uh, the, the, the regulations or the proclamation within that state. Now, if the president sees that or if the baby feels that the governor has not responded, probably he can go, go ahead and make it. Now, people are, it's, it's the devil and the deep blue sea, really. And all leads to death. If you're hungry, you're going to eventually go to die. <laughs> if, you are, if you're attacked by, if you're, if you're infected by, if you're infected by coronavirus, you may survive. People have been surviving. You know, so there's a chance of survival. But, but so is that, is that part of the reason you that think is why maybe people, people are... If, 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 that is why people are... A, a man, naturally, a man's natural instinct is to be free. He has to see a reason why... And then you have to give an alternative for, 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 for locking him in. If you're locking him in without any palliatives, there is certainly... Look at in Italy. In Italy, people began to protest. People came out and began to protest. There was upheaval. Because there is so much a man can take. As I am here, I'm a lawyer have not been able to go, 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 go to work. I mean, you see, um, um, they, they, uh, in fact, it was even very funny. I was telling some people today, um, uh, how is uh, uh, Funke Kindele uh, going to do in court without her lawyer? How is the lawyer going to go to court? They say, oh, yeah, uh, she, she's going to get a lawyer. 
How is the lawyer going to get to court? Because there are policemen everywhere. What are you, where are you telling them you're going to? So they, if, if I was her lawyer, I was going to court when she's arrested and she, she was arraigned today, they will also arrest me on my way there. And then I will also have to get a lawyer to come and, to come and bail me out. You know, they say, okay, uh, in court, you're only, you can only do very um, urgent matters. However, how are you even going to att attend the proceedings? Okay, uh, uh, you actually answered some of the questions I was going to ask you. Yes. And one was the issue of hunger and, I mean, between hunger and coronavirus. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and talk about the security officers that have been deployed to the streets. Yeah. Um, the IGP came out to caution them to be of good behavior yeah. and treat citizens with utmost respect. But we do know there are instances where these officers are also not treated right. And some of them, speaking on condition of anonymity, has said that they, they feel like their hands are tied in trying to get these people to obey uh, others. In the Aquaibom that you talked about, in the Lagos that we talked about, you see people playing football and uh, disregarding uh, the order. And they're saying that they're handicapped. What better way do you think um, the police can, you know, First of all, I, I, make people yeah. obey orders without necessarily using force. Because the next thing they will say now, because I'm talking to you, you're not listening, the next thing is force. It's difficult in this country because of our psyche. First of all, the, our natural tendency is not to, we, we really don't obey orders. We don't, we don't, um, um, and I'm sorry to speak like this, but I mean, I'm a Nigerian. Now, um, why some people don't even say, okay, so why should I obey? Is when you apply, you have a lopsided way of applying the laws. You know, if I, if I see you've, they say everybody should be inside, and I see you allowing one person to go out, now that this people ask why. Why, why, is he, why is he, why are you not applying to him, not, not, and then you, you want to enforce, enforce it on me, so I'll, I'll tend to disobey. The policemen actually, they're, apart from the fact that, for example, Akwaibu said you mentioned there was a story around a, a medical doctor who was going to work was, 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 was yeah. brutalized by the police. And I'm happy that the Commission of Police in Akwaibu State you speedily, know, did, yeah, and they did an order room trial and all that. You know. um, so when people see that there is, a, there is a consequences for actions, right, they will, they will, buckle, um, up. They, they will buckle up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very important. But then they are also exposed. All the policemen I've seen, you will not see even one with PPE. I, I mean, you, you don't think that, or you shouldn't imagine that um, coronavirus is going to respect the fact that you're a you're sergeant right. and all that, you know. But there is no, absolutely no protection for them. What is the IGP doing for these policemen? They are not immune to this. They are standing out there. And, um, and sometimes they have contacts with people, but they don't have any PPE equipment on them. To, to, so it's, it's, it's something that has to be looked at uh, very, very, very um, soon. I do agree with you there. Thank you yeah. very much for your thoughts You're on welcome. the program. Thanks a lot. Very good. For All right. We will take our plots report now. And when we return, I'll be giving my take. Do stay with us. The enforcement team arrived with a community and met activities going on as usual. The team first commenced a sensitization talk with residents on the dangers of assembling large numbers in the light of the coronavirus epidemic. Please, learn to say no to coronavirus. Learn to say no to what? Coronavirus. And for those of us that have no business in the market, let them go home. Beware of Babambuna. You understand? Beware of added five people that are pushing your wheelbarrow. All those things, when you touch the surface, you can be coronavirus. When you dip your finger into your nose or your mouth, your eyes, if the virus is there, it will enter inside you. And that will become a problem for you and your family. The team now began dispersing the crowd following the mandate of the tax force, which is to enforce compliance of President Mamadou Bari's directive on a lockdown within the FCT. Residents at the automated teller point, ATM machine point, we also dispersed. The, the, the management of this bank, they should come out and do the needful. They have, come up, they have provided the canopy for you. It is not for you now to space yourself. Please space yourself. Let us collectively, effectively, and sincerely put an end to the spread of coronavirus. The social distancing here is zero. Compliance level, as Mr. Dewu raised, is zero. You are gathering in your thousands. In the next one minute, we beg all of you, in whatever faith you hold jelly, we want this injunction completely empty. Everybody, please disappear. The team also discovered the mocks where prayers were being held 
and ordered all worshippers to leave to their homes as they were in violation of the lockdown order. The essence of you not clustering together, the essence of you creating a, a healthy space, it's all for the coronavirus to be stopped from its spread. I got you. <laughs> but you don't seem to be ready to comply. I want everybody to leave the mosque. Anything that has to do with man, with the ketchup, anything that has to do with the mosque, that we even make a passerby to see that this is the mosque that can congregate and pray together, she will be packed away. Now, as I'm speaking, the ship is passed. The team leader, Ekaruata, from at the compliance level of Kujie community, describing it as a disaster waiting to happen. The assessment in Kujie is not good, but what if we are to be very candid with what we all know, which you know and I know, and the directive given day before yesterday, which some claim have been modified, but the people here have not been informed, I don't think that they largely contravene because uh, markets, uh, according to what they heard last two weeks, last two days ago, was to be open from the time of 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, which is what they all did. But Kujie is a market on its own. So the whole market opened, everyone come to the road, Kujie came to the road. The vehicular movement compliance is about, uh, let me say, 80% because most of those who are living here are essential staffs. All those working in the airport, the NRS, as immigration, working in civil defense, their office is just uh, are very close here, about five minutes. So they all live in Kujie. So when you are stopping vehicle, you are saying that then we have little contraventions of some persons here who are not supposed to be on the road. Those ones we have arrested here and the DPO and the team here are doing a very wonderful job. We need to go back strongly and review the market opening policy because if that policy remains, Kujie just a failure. From Abuja, Idong Joseph, Plus TV, Af To see the reality of the growing effect of this lockdown on the largely poor masses as predicted by Airspot is heartbreaking to say the least. But an even harder truth is that if we are to survive this crisis, social distancing is our new normal. It is the best advice for now by health authorities for us to avoid a worst case scenario. So yes, sacrifices have been asked even from those with so little already. To these fellow Nigerians I speak tonight, we see you. But even you must see that those among us that have are coming out to help in this crisis because they care. Government is doing what they can. Yes, it might not be enough, probably won't be. But these are unprecedented times. We will continue to push them to do even more. You, however, must not willfully increase the risk of infection to you and your family. I understand it is hard, but please stay home. It is only for a while. We have survived a lot worse as a people. We will survive this too. Thank you for watching the program. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, Please be well.